Kasaki show on the trev. Sweet. Anyway, continuing on with retired numbers. And today we're talking about the second number retired in New Jersey. And while most of the numbers we've talked about so far, and some of the numbers we're going to talk about this year, are usually stars in the sense of high productivity, point production, stuff like that. Very rarely do we ever talk about a guy whose statistical contribution is no more or less in penalty minutes as opposed to anything else. But it's not the penalty minutes. The guy's number retired, I can guarantee you that. But today, we're talking about the number three, which hangs up in New Jersey. That was worn by Ken Danico. Let's do it. So Ken Danico's 20-year career, all with New Jersey, began on June 9th, 1982. And that's when he was made New Jersey's second selection in the first round, or 18th overall, in the entry draft. Now, coincidentally, the 18th pick could have been a pick of the Boston Bruins. If it weren't for a trade between the Bruins and the Colorado Rockies during the 1981-82 season. Yeah, I said the Rockies. Another interesting note is the Devils weren't even known as the Devils by the time the 1982 draft rolled around. The team had only been relocated from Colorado 13 days before the draft. So while the Colorado Rockies essentially ceased to exist by June 9th, the Devils weren't known as the Devils until June 30th, 1982. But Danico wouldn't make his debut with the New Jersey Devils until the 1983-84 season when he was called up from the junior team and managed to play in 11 games before missing the next 40 thanks to an injury. And in those 11 games, he did manage 5 points, but also managed to stabilize his reputation as the stay-at-home defenseman, doing what he could to keep the puck out of the net. And he spent the entirety of the 84-85 season with the farm team, but did manage to make it into one NHL game, scoring no points, but managing 10 penalty minutes in said game. So he was on the score sheet on one way or another. For the 1985-86 season, his time was split between the farm and the big club, but in 44 games he would put up 10 assists while getting his first triple-digit penalty minute season with an even 100. The 86-87 season would see Danico start his full-time stint with the Devils, playing in 79 games and adding 14 points to his 183 penalty minutes. The 87-88 season would see the Devils make the playoffs for the first time in New Jersey, and for the first time in their franchise history since 1977-78, which was ironically their first time as a franchise ever. So, three, three cities, and only two playoff appearances. Do the math, right? But more impressively, their playoff punch to the ticket, their ticket punch to the playoffs, was in an overtime game on the last game of the season against cross-state rivals, the New York Rangers. What was also more impressive is Danico would play in a full 80-game schedule, putting up 12 points, and eclipsing 200 penalty minutes for the first time, putting up 239 of them. Now, while in the playoffs, the Devils would ride all the momentum they could up until the Wales Conference Finals, where they would take the Bruins all the way to seven games, but would eventually lose to the Stanley Cup finalists. In 20 games, in 20 of those playoff games, Danico would put up a career best in assists with six and points with seven as well as penalty minutes with 83. Those are playoff bests for him. The 88-89 season would see the Devils miss the playoffs, with Danico adding 10 points in a full 80 games with a career-best 283 penalty minutes. The 1989-90 season would be Danico's best statistical year in his career, putting up a career-best in goals with 6 and points with 21 while adding a career-best two goals in six playoff games. 
Gotta remember, he's not an offensive defenseman. He's a stay-at-home defenseman. And a big one to boot. The 90-91 season would see Danico play a full game, 80-game schedule, putting up a career-best 16 assists amongst his 20 points, while adding one assist in seven playoff games. The 91-92 season would be important in terms of debuts for the New Jersey Devils, more or less in the sense you had Martin Brodeur, who we will talk about, as well as Scott Niedermeyer, who we will talk about. But you also had Scott Stevens, who we have talked about. Needless to say, in time, these additions did solidify their blue line and gave Danico more of room to be a stay-at-home defenseman while all the other ones played offensive defenseman or goalie, depending on the player. But in this season, Danico will play a full 80-game schedule again while contributing eight points and also adding three assists in seven playoff games. The 92-93 season would see Danico play in a full 84-game schedule as the Angel expanded their games played per year by four and added 13 points while hitting 200 penalty minutes for the fifth and final time while going pointless in five playoff games. The 93-94 season would see the Devils' defense set team bests in fewest even-strength goals and power play opportunities on their way to a deep playoff run. Danico would, would contribute 10 points in 78 games, and the Devils would go as far as the Eastern Conference Finals before losing to eventual Stanley Cup champs and bitter cross-state division rivals, the New York Rangers, in a Game 7 double overtime. Ouch. But in 20 playoff games, Danico would add one assist, and then we had our first lockout. Now, unlike the lockout that will happen in 10 years from this point, the season was salvaged for 94-95, which was a great thing for the Devils. And Danica would only add three points in 25 games. And the, the Devils did advance to the playoffs and make quite a memory of it. They even managed to get over the conference final hump as they'd managed to eliminate the Philadelphia Flyers to advance to the Stanley Cup final for the first time in franchise history. And what should have been an unfortunate thing, meeting the heavily favored Detroit Red Wings for the Stanley Cup, turned into a four-game sweep. As Danico and the Devils' defense limited those same heavily favored Red Wings to only seven games, or seven goals in four games, while it's scoring them over double that same amount to win their first Stanley Cup. And Danico would score one goal in 20 playoff games. Awesome. The 95-96 season would see the Devils, who were, by all accounts on accord, riding high after winning the Cup the season before with all kinds of momentum and almost invincibility. They'd missed the playoffs entirely on a complete reversal of fortune on the last game of the year. Seems to be that that's their theme, right? Now, this will be the first time they've missed the playoffs since 1989, becoming the first team since the 1970 Montreal Canadiens to win the Cup the season before and then miss the playoffs entirely the next season. And Danico would put up six points in 80 games while adding over 100 penalty minutes for the last time in his career with 115 of those. And this would also be the last season the Devils would miss the playoffs with Danico in the lineup. The 96-97 season we see the Devils get back to their familiarity of winning, clinching the team's first Atlantic Division title, as well as the first seed in the Eastern Conference, with Danico putting up nine points in 70 games. While the, now with the first seed in the playoffs, it does give you home ice advantage throughout the entirety of your stay in the playoffs. It doesn't necessarily always necessitate or guarantee that it's going to be a win, as the Devils would only advanced to the conference semifinals, with Danico adding no points in those 10 playoff games. 97-98, well, it was pretty much a carbon copy of the 96-97 season for the Devils, clinching the Atlantic Division for a second straight year, and first in the Eastern Conference, again, with Danico only adding one assist in only 37 playoff, or 37 games, 
with one more assist in six playoff games. The 98-99 season, well, it's really no different than the last two. The Devils would clinch the division for a third straight year and first in the Eastern Conference for a third straight year, with Danico actually playing a full 82-game schedule for the last time in his career while putting up 11 points. With those, he managed to actually go pointless again in the playoffs in seven playoff games. So, not a surprise. The 99-2000 season would see Danico play in his 1,000th NHL game. And we also see the Devils change the formula as far as clinching everything was concerned as they didn't clinch the Atlantic and they didn't clinch the first seed in the Eastern Conference for the first time in four years. But they still managed to advance the playoffs with Danico adding six assists in 78 games. And the only real sign of repetition would be in the Eastern Conference Finals, where the Devils would, again, eliminate division rivals, the Philadelphia Flyers. And they would defeat them in seven games to advance the Stanley Cup Final for their second time in five years. And what I can only really describe as typical New Jersey Devils hockey, with the whole Devils holding the Dallas Stars to nine goals while scoring 15 of their own, which also included Danico scoring a goal in Game 1 of the Stanley Cup Finals. And this Stanley Cup Final had a bit of everything. Triple overtime Game 5, double overtime Game 6. Cup winners scored in that double overtime. And the Devils, well, yeah, they win their second cup in five years. Danico would add three points in 23 playoff games. And, you know, winning your second cup, that, that's not enough. Danico also walked out of the season with the Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy, which is an award annually handed out for perseverance and dedication to hockey. And he earned it. The 2000-2001 season was great in that New Jersey didn't repeat history as they were avoiding that by not making the playoffs the next season. They actually did, so that was a good thing. But once again, they went back to the well and decided to start clinching everything in their sight, clinching the division and first seed in the Eastern Conference again, with Danico contributing four assists in 77 games. And with the hope of back-to-back -back Stanley Cup in their sights, the Devils defeated Mario and the Pittsburgh Penguins in five games to make a return to the Stanley Cup Finals. Unfortunately, the Devils were going in face-to-face -face with Ray Bork and the Colorado Avalanche, who were on a 16-W mission. If you remember that series, you'll know what I'm talking about. And despite both teams holding up well to one another, each team scoring 15 goals each, the Avalanche would defeat the Devils in seven games, making this the only time to this point the Devils would leave the playoffs without a cup. But the Devils would lose the playoffs in seven games. Ouch. Daniel Danico would contribute three assists in those 25 games. The 0102 season would see Danico put up six assists in 67 games, making this the sixth and last time Danico would not score a goal in any regular season. And he would also go pointless in six playoff games. 0203 would mark Danico's last season in the NHL and also see him break his 255 game streak without a goal as he would score two this season to go along with his seven assists in nine points in 69 games played. Nice. New Jersey would clinch the Atlantic Division once again for the fifth time in seven years, but they wouldn't clinch the first seed in the Eastern Conference. They'd actually finish second. Not that that's a bad consolation prize either, but that didn't really matter much. I mean, Jersey was on a roll in 0203. Up to this point, Danico had the distinction of being the only player to appear in every New Jersey Devils playoff game. Now, that's counting their time in Jersey. That's not counting their time in Colorado and not counting the non-playoff time they had in Kansas City. He's been in every game since they've been in Jersey by this point. And that would end 
as he would be a sit-down scratch for more than a few games after Game 4 against the Boston Bruins. Now, while he may have been scratch, the Devils did manage to advance once again to the Stanley Cup Finals, beating the Ottawa Senators in the Conference Finals for their fourth trip in eight years. Now, here the Devils would face the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. And as heavy favorites, Danico would be a scratch for the first six games of the series before being placed in the lineup for Game 7. Now, at the time... Coach Burns figured they needed the spark. They needed the actual gimme, the incentive to win this cup. Wouldn't you know it? They went on to shut out said Anaheim Mighty Ducks to win their third cup in franchise history. To really help cushion the blow or sensing the impending retirement coming, Danico was on the shift for the final puck drop in the final relay of these playoffs while going pointless in 13 playoff games. If you're going to go out, go on top, right? Take the cup with you, especially if it's your third. So, on July 11th, 2003, just a month, just about over a month, after winning the cup, Danico announced his retirement from the NHL. And a 20-year career that spanned as long as it did, with him playing as much as he did, winning as much as he did. That's the number of Ken Danico in the number three. Let's go over some stats. So in a team record, 1,283 games played. He's 36 goals, 142 assists for 178 points, as well as a team record, 2,516 penalty minutes, making him a select handful of guys who have over 1,000 games and over 2,000 penalty minutes in the NHL. For his playoff stats, there's 175 games played with 5 goals, 17 assists, 22 points, and a team record, 296 penalty minutes. Top of that, he had three Stanley Cups to that name, as well as his 2000 Bill Masterton Memorial Trophy. March 24th, 2006, just over a month after they retired their first, New Jersey went ahead and retired number three, to, be, to make him the second New Jersey Devil to have his number retired. So here's my own opinion of the guy. So as I said in the beginning, this guy was by no means measures or statistically inclined to be a superstar. What he was was more or less a more important piece to a bigger project. And when I say that, I mentioned that in the video when I mentioned Danico, Niedermeyer, Brodeur and Stevens. He was the, the building block. And more important than that, he was with New Jersey essentially before they were even devils. He was with New Jersey in the transition phase when they went from Colorado to New Jersey. He's, his, his time in New Jersey is older than their name. So if you want to think about it that way. You didn't, he didn't need to be a superstar to you, for you to know he was on the ice. He could, you just, all you had to do was run into him. And he'd let you know you were there, and that was not usually a good place to be. His penalty minutes prove it. You know, the fact that he was on a team that by year would let in fewer and fewer and fewer goals. Like, he didn't need to be the flashy defenseman. He could be the stay-at-home defenseman. They had enough flashy defensemen for him. Without Danico, you have to wonder, are three cups and five runs possible? Four runs, sorry, in his time? Makes you wonder, right? Either way, solid, solid, important piece to the New Jersey defense corps. And entertaining to watch. I'll say that much. But there you have it. The number three. It's another one of those hockey shows. I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture. Especially if you've made it to this point. It's a great thing if you did. And don't think I'm not appreciative of that either. But if you want to, if you're digging my shit, if you're liking what I'm putting down, I just want to say hi. Give me a thumbs up. I think I've earned it.
If you haven't hit that red button yet, you know you should. It's only a matter of time, right? Social. It's in the description down below. Let's move forward. I promise I'm getting to more retired numbers. I'm writing out a few. I know I have to have one done this month. I have to. The rest I'm writing up. As for stars, you'll get your stars. Don't worry. I plan on doing at least four this year. But either way, in the meantime, in between time, do it for me or some Trev. Later.